Good morning, um, it's David again. Um, as you've seen me fishing and posting pictures lately, there's been a lot of heavy cover involved. Um, duckweed, eel grass, and lily pads. Um, hy hydrilla, of course. So I'm gonna talk to you about fishing in heavy cover. Now, when you fish in heavy cover, you really have three options. You can, one, avoid it and miss out on a lot of great fish. Two, you can fish along the edges of your weed lines. Or three, you can get right into it and fish on top of the cover and into the open pockets. Okay, first we're gonna discuss option two, fishing the weed lines. Uh, one of my picks would be, especially to cover a large area, would be spinner baits like these. Uh, size them according to what the fish are re requesting, of course. Uh, obviously, if you're fishing in a place that's fairly small bass, something like this guy here would be more appealing to them. Another thing is your blade design. Uh, you have a Colorado blade like these, which are wider and make more of a thumping sound which is good in low light conditions um, and you can get multiple blade designs and there's also the long narrow blades the willow blades um, along a weed line you're probably going to be better served by your standard Colorado um, you want to get parallel to the weed line and fish as close to the edge as possible just remember you need a rod with a strong back to it, a firm tip, and you want to use braided line because monofilament tends to stretch and these fish in this cover are going to go back into the cover as soon as they grab your bait. And uh, so you've got to minimize that stretch. Uh, also keep your rod tip high so that you can set the hook as quickly as possible. Uh, fish on weeds like this and heavy cover tend to be very aggressive fish. Another option, of course, is crankbaits. Um, I like these particular models here with a square bill and this fat body. When these go through the water, they have a quick wobble. You can work these through the water slow, more slowly giving the fish more opportunity to find it. Um, just make sure that you size your crankbait according to the water column. You don't want to go so deep that you're drudging through the mud and getting snagged. And you don't want to be so shallow that fish hiding under the cover can't really see it very well. Uh, so this is just a matter of making sure you have a good selection of crankbaits and making sure you're familiar with what depth they go to. If you're not sure, tie one on, do a test cast in open water, see how deep it's running, um, and see how fast your retrieve affects that. Uh, another good option is a uh, lipless rattle bait, like uh, rattle traps or the shad wrap. A lot of times those go do really well as also because they have that added attraction of the rattles inside them. And my third choice would be soft plastics. Now fishing along a weed line, I would want to use a weight with this. But what I do is, I add my worm sinker here. I always keep a bag of toothpicks with me. And what I do is I'll insert the end of the toothpick in here and then break it off. And when this gets wet, it will swell and hold that worm sinker in place. Great thing about that is, this will not be down here allowing weeds and grass to catch on to your entire rig because what's the point of hooking your worm weedless if your sinker's not weedless as well so toothpicks an inexpensive very useful tool to have i always keep them with me now if you're fishing on the surface of the uh, lily pads or the hydrilla, what have you. Of course, especially later in the summer, can't go wrong with these. Imitation frogs. 
These are fun. Just make sure when you're fishing in the cover, keep your rod tip high. Nice firm rod, braided line. You want to minimize any slack in your line because any line hanging down is going to sink and it's going to get caught up and tangled on something. And you don't want to have your line tangled 10 feet away from your lure and then have a large bass or pickerel slam your lure. Um, and then my only two choices when it comes to soft plastics on cover is of course the Zoom Super Fluke. It has a pocket here that makes it truly weedless. And of course the Sluggo. Sluggo is a fantastic lure as well. Now the awesome thing about these two types of soft plastics is they're thick bodied, they're heavy, so you can cast them a good distance but they're also buoyant so they will stay up on top and as long as you keep your rod tip high and no slack in the line you can slide these right on top of the lily pads down into the pockets back up onto the lily pad um, these are the only two plastic baits I really would use in heavy cover and then uh, finally my other option on fishing on the cover would be buzz baits. As you can see they have this prop instead of a spinning blade uh, to reflect light these use a prop which turns the surface of the water. You can fish these right on top of cover just like you would those soft plastics. Um, sure there's this hook and it could snag right? Well there's a solution to that as well. Rather than use your standard trailer like these, which are great for spinner baits in an open water or along a weed line because they do add visual appeal, also they allow your spinner bait, you can jig it, reel, drop it, reel, drop it, and this trailer will add some visual appeal for the bass. In heavy coverage, though, what I like to use are your standard curly tailed grubs. The reason I like these is of course you have the curly tail for the visual appeal but mainly this thick body. I can set this onto my buzz baits, set them up weedless or with the hook exposed but these add so much buoyancy to your buzz bait that you can actually work the buzz bait more slowly through the water allowing the fish more time to find your bait. And more fish, fewer casts, it's a really great equation in my mind. So uh, good luck to you guys. I hope to see some posts on Facebook soon, see how you're doing, and uh, I'll keep the photos and videos coming. Have a great day.